in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tariq Sud. Thank you very much for watching my videos and your exceptional support to make this channel a grand success. We are a partner. Please subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert a challenges into opportunities and opportunities into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into value addition. Thank you very much again for your precious time. Today we are going to discuss Six Sigma Lean Management Model Lecture Number Three. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control mechanisms. Okay. Before my lecture, I used to read a Quranic verse: "Rabbi Shrali Sadri Waja Sarli Amri Wahalal Okda Tam Millisani Yakhu Kauli Rabbi Zidni Ilma." Okay. Now I'm going to run a complete reel on my lecture number three. So far, we have discussed lecture number one and two on introduction. Today, we are going to discuss lecture number three. So, in my next slide, I'm going to define you a key takeaway points from lecture number three. In my lecture number one and two, what we discuss: what is Six Sigma as a method, methodology of Six Sigmas, principles, and lean management, DMAC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control mechanism, key differences between lean and Six Sigma. family methodologies and history of six sigma these six seven points we have discussed in lecture number 1 and 2 okay now i'm going to discuss key take away points of my lecture number 3 key take away points of lecture number 3 so the over here so the history of six sigma will will be discussed today uh, six sigma strategy conventional strategy six sigma critical points and problem solving strategy of six sigma and voice of customer how can be addressed by using six sigma method now the history of six sigma okay 1984 bob galvin of the motorola adopted the first objectives of six sigma that is first 10x levels of improvement 1989 second 10x improvement by 1991 then six sigma capability by 1992 bill smith and engineers from motorola is the person credited as the father of six sigma that has happened in the later on in 1984 taxes instrument and abb what collaborated with motorola to further develop a six sigma how this experiment can happen 1984 application experts leave motorola so 1995 the allied signals begin six sigma initiatives as directed by larry bossis in the and what they captured the interest of the wall street journals okay 1995 a general electric led by jack walchins began the most widespread undertaking of six sigma even attempted and 1997 to present six sigma spans industries worldwide okay simply statically the six sigma as demonstrated here that was generated around a targeting a process i mean average six standard deviations okay away from the closest specification limit finding and eliminating sources of variations and sources of defects that is second attempt did by the six sigma number 3 by using the process standard deviation to determine the location of the mean the results could be predicted at 3.4 defects per million by using the statistics that is the number of four there is an allowance for the process mean to shift 1.5 here standard deviations this number is another academic and abstract controversy it is not worth debating we will get into discussions of this number later in this lecture here today okay now uh, six sigma strategy six sigma places the emphasis on the process the first year using the structured data driven approach centered on the customer system can resolve a business problem where they are rooted for example i will give you first the monthly and reports so then capital expenditures approvals 
and new hiring recruitment process how they are linked to each other six sigma is a breakthrough strategy what is basically widen the scope of definition of quality includes the value and the utility of the product service to both the company and the customer success of six sigma depends on the extent of transformation achieved in each of these levels okay this is my conventional strategy in my conventional strategy convention defi definitions of the quality focused on the conformance to standard if you can see here this is a my a two barriers this is my ls low specification limit and this is my usa upper specification limit what i demonstrate here if i am between both limits i am good targeting so i am good here if i am between usl and lsl upper specification limit and low specification limit if i am crossing the up specification limit i am here bad i am here in both i am violating the boundaries as long as i am between lsl and usl i am good and i am proving or providing as per required this is my conventional approach conventional strategy was to create a product or service that met certain specifications assume that if product and services were of good quality then their performance standards were correct that is first year okay number 2 rework was required to ensure final quality number 3 efforts were overlooked and unquantified time money equipment used etc that is how conventional strategy was adopted as far as the quality is concerned okay how to we accomplish this to get the result we should focus our behavior on the x and y elements which i'm going to discuss here so what are the y variables or elements the first is a dependent second output effect symptoms and last year monitors so these are the five segments of five variables similarly x has the five similar variables independent input process cause problem and control okay what process will carry over on on this area it will be equal to y so these are the y parameter and that is the x parameters the function of the f okay if we are so good at x why do we constantly test and audit y value okay find the control the critical axis so then we need to find out what are the critical element of the axis so now i'm going to discuss critical elements by using the six sigma strategy in my next slide okay now problem solving as we discussed earlier to find the critical x so the problem solving method they understand the relationship first then identify the vital independent variables then optimize the independent variables monitor the optimized independent variables like right here okay describe the concept in equations this is also known as a transfer function here so as we discussed earlier y parameter and x parameters so after transfer functions you will deliver what value you are looking for y parameters okay so on my next slide so we will run one exercise by using y is equal to fx this simple state that y is a function of the x axis in other word y is dictated by the x value x criticals okay exercise okay consider establishing a y is equal to fx so equation for the simple everyday activity such as a producing a cup of espresso tea in the case our output y or espresso tea over here so this is my y value which i demonstrated espresso tea so this is my f and then x1 x2 x3 x4 so so in order to have espresso tea what type coffee i needed x1 x2 x3 x n so this is the multiple or different type of coffees so now by using a 
six sigma technique i will produce espresso tea which is a more appropriate to producing espresso caffeine or espresso specification okay we use a variety of six sigma tools to help separate the vital fuels variable defect of the y from the travel manis some process contains a many variables however our y is not affected equally by all of them by focusing on the vital fuel we instantly gain leverage here so now as i discussed here no this is my filter here so by using my filter x1 x2 x4 x3 so i got from out of them with the x3 so that is x3 who will deliver what i supposed to be in order to have my aspersity what ashmed said give me a lever big enough and fulcrum on which to place it and i shall move the world so very correctly mentioned by the ashmedas here so recap this one we use a variety of six sigma tools to help separate the vital fuels variable affecting our wise from the travel many some process contains many many variables however our y is not affected equally by all of them what we supposed to get it by focusing on the vital few we instantly gain leverage what we need to have it okay on my next slide here okay breakthrough strategy now in the breakthrough strategy here so i'm going to discuss here the, by utilizing the dmac problem solving here what is dmac problem solving define measure analyze improve and control mechanism problem solving methodology to identify and optimize the wider of your variables we will realize sustainable breakthrough performance as opposed to incremental improvement or even worse temporary and non sustained improvement okay what basically it demonstrates if you can see in the picture down here so we have two segmented one is a performance is a good and one performance is the bad okay so this is the a uh, time period here so this is my performance here so this is my y axis and x axis okay now if you see here the first over here the my ucl upper control limit and lcl my lower control limit so initially my process variable violate of both old standard and this new standard in the old standard my process variable violate the boundaries over here if you can see here upper control limit and lower control limits after breakthrough with six sigma so if you can see here so my process variable control and it stay in between the lines here so upper control limit and low control limits so it's mean by implementing a six sigma strategy so we have improved our process variable and stay in between the lines it won't violate the boundary it don't violate the control issues so it stay in between the lines okay upper space it is also known as upper specification or upper control limits lower specification or lower control limit okay now so why of driven strategy the foundation of six sigma requires a focus on the voice of the customer so first here the six sigma demands the voice of the customers here and the business and the process which provides awareness of the need that are critical to the quality ctq or our pro product and process that is first here second identification of the gap between what is and what should be number second here so then number 3 identification of process defects that contribute to the gap number 3 here and number 4 here knowledge of which process are most broken number 50 here enlightenment as the unacceptable cost of the poor quality so that is how it demonstrate first voice of profits voice of business and voice of customers so these three voices are linked to each other to drive a business 
and maximize its efficiency as, as maximum as possible. Okay, this is my conclusion slide. Uh, so far, we have uh, discussed uh, first uh, history of uh, Six Sigma in detail, Six Sigma strategy and uh, conventional strategy. And we also discuss uh, the difference between Six Sigma strategy and conventional way of thinking. Then what are the Six Sigma criticals? Then we also use how the Six Sigma can help to solve the problem or problem solving strategy and the voice of customer, voice of business, voice of profits we have also discussed in my last slides. Thank you very much for your precious time. Okay, now next topic we are going to discuss six is my defined phase. So it will take uh, probably uh, four to five lectures to define what is the six sigma basically as far as the defined phase is concerned. Thank you very much for your precious time. Please don't hesitate. Send me your feedback inputs on t.mosul.dr at path.edu. Please stay at home, stay safe, stay inspired and blessed. Thank you very much again for your precious time.